In 1977, the dynamic Oakland Raider organization and their great fans shared a season that began with them as world champions of professional football, a crowning glory for an already unrivaled record of excellence. Four pressure-packed months later, the AFC Championship game in Denver. The Raiders in the playoffs, the 10th time in 11 years, lost another starter as Fred Boletnikoff injured a shoulder. In street clothes or uniforms, Raider players watched as controversy captured headlines. But neither calls nor injuries are excuses for wearers of silver and black. Not these Oakland Raiders. Challenge is met by contact, intensity, effort, by battling adversity. Throughout that bitter cold Denver afternoon, the Raiders fought to cut the Broncos lead. In the fourth quarter, a Ken Stabler pass to tight end Dave Casper narrowed the gap. But the talented Broncos stayed in front 20 to 10. Yet these remarkable Raiders, pro football's winningest team, never give up. They attacked until the final gun cut them short 20 to 17. Suddenly, disappointingly, Another memorable year of glory ended in a single day of defeat. Despite pain and heartbreak, when the Oakland Raiders and their loyal fans recall 1977, none will ever forget the gallant hour. Thunderous ovation greeted each of the world champion Raiders as they came out for the opener. Special teams led by number 37, Lester Hayes, and number 57, Randy McClanahan, swarmed the Chargers. Ray Guy's booming punt set up coverage by Charles Phillips and Morris Bradshaw. Pat Toomey, number 67, and Otis Sistrunk, number 60, limited San Diego's offense. Ken Stabler hit Cliff Branch, and the confident Raiders, primed and readied by skillful coach John Madden, opened with a 24-0 shutout. The national sports spotlight shifted to Pittsburgh for the rematch of the 1976 AFC Championship. Prior to this dramatic Raiders-Steeler confrontation, Two healthy squads calmly exchanged greetings. But hostile Steeler fans wanted no gestures of friendship, for they were on a wartime alert. And war they got. Rowe, Toomey, Rice, Hall, Ted Qualick, Atkinson helped shatter Pittsburgh's 10-game winning streak in a performance labeled awesome by the press. Oakland's famed precision passing was firing smoothly on all cylinders. Stabler's sturdy protectors included running backs Mark Van Egan and Clarence Davis. Kicker Earl Mann with Dave Hum holding added nine points, and the mighty Raiders never trailed. On defense, linebacker Monty Johnson, number 58, delivered headaches. Defensive captain Willie Brown, number 24, became the only player to ever intercept passes in 15 consecutive pro seasons. A 16-7 triumph for a dominating Raider team called better than the Super Bowl win. But tragedy marred triumph. Outstanding starters Phil Villapiano and John Vella were lost for the season. Other key players for part of the season. In Kansas City, the Raiders were short six key men. But alert safety George Atkinson, number 43, 
and a combat-ready defense gave Oakland room to operate. A huge Monday night national audience saw a Raider offensive mastery as the Silver and Black scored 24 points in 13 minutes. Behind crushing blocking, long a Raider trademark, Van Egan and Davis each topped 100 yards as the defending world champions roared on 37 to 28. In Cleveland, 80,000 saw Neil Colsey, number 20, and the Raiders playing with controlled fury despite a short week and a third consecutive road game. All scoring was from in close. Mark Van Egan again rushed for over 100 yards as the 26 to 10 romp was the Raiders' 17th consecutive win over two seasons. In New York, two ex-Alabama quarterbacks met. But Raider assistants Tom Doms and Lou Erba well knew the Jets would provide competition, not conversation. Stabler to Casper put Oakland up 14 to seven. But the Jets roared back on an 87-yard score from Richard Todd to Wesley Walker. The New Yorkers increased their lead to 27-14 and held on until the fourth quarter. Calmly, deliberately, astute Raider coach John Madden responded. Stabler to premier wide receiver Fred Boletnikoff brought the tenacious Raiders to within six. Stabler back, keeps both backs in. He looks, he throws, going deep to Ciani. Touchdown, Raiders! And the Raiders have... Pulled this one out of the fire after a narrow, narrow escape at Shea Stadium in New York. In Denver, the Raiders, 5-1, and one, met the undefeated Broncos on Orange Sunday. But Oakland would be top dog today. John Matuzak, number 72, led the charge as Tume and Sistrunk helped record eight sacks. Cut and chop. The Broncos orange got sliced. Then the meticulously programmed Raider offense went to work. Three wide receivers on third down and six. Siani in a slot with Boletnikov to the right. To the left is Branch. Back to pass Faber. Throws against the rush. He's got Branch on the five. Touchdown Raiders. Got a hand laid on him. Behind offensive captain Gene Upshaw, number 63, Clarence Davis skittered for 105 yards as Oakland controlled and conquered 24 to 14. And Denver fans headed home, saddened over losing more than just their shirts. After five road games in seven weeks, the Raiders returned to the Oakland Coliseum, hopeful their roster would stabilize for the coming playoff drive. Against Seattle, Oakland special teams were quick and deadly as Lester Hayes, number 37, was lethal. On defense, reliable Willie Brown, 24, Skip Thomas, 26, and Jack Tatum, 32, helped ground the Seahawks. And Egan followed 70 Henry Lawrence en route to an AFC rushing title. With precision passing by Ken Stabler to Mike Ciani, number 49, and Fred Boletnikoff, Oakland triumphed 44 to 7. Next, assistants Oliver Spencer and Tom Flores prepared for Houston who the week before routed the Chicago Bears 47 to nothing. The Raider defense pressured early with number 74, Dave Rowe, and number 60, Otis Sistrunk, in the forefront. 
The alert silver and black intercepted four, including this one by Monty Johnson. The defense created breaks, putting the offense in the goal position often. Stabler completed 23 passes as the explosive Raiders flashed toward a record 13th consecutive winning season. But the Oilers hung in and trailed only 34-29 despite a swarming Raider secondary. Neil Colsey's interception stopped one drive, then safety Jack Tatum, number 32, ended the drama. Raiders leading by five. Back is Pastorini. Time to throw. He drills one down to Johnson. Interception open. Tatum from the eight up to the 20, the 25, 30. Got a convoy with Monty Johnson, and he has run down from behind at the 48-yard line. Dan Pastorini came over to make the tackle, and John Madden wipes his... Sandy Brow with a relieved left hand right now. But there was no relief in San Diego the following week as Ken Stabler joined the injury list. Inspired defense allowed the Chargers only 12 points with Tatum and Thomas teaming up on this interception. Number 15, Mike Ray, scrambled for the Raiders' only score as Oakland suffered their second loss of the season. Buffalo next, and the Monday night crowd and television audience alike learned again that pride and poise is no idle phrase to the silver and black. Losses and injuries were forgotten as brilliant coach John Madden rallied his troops. Three times Stabler struck for touchdown, and there could be no doubt why these Oakland Raiders are perennially feared, respected, and imitated. The disciplined offense planned well and executed perfectly, completely dominating the Bills. The defense led by Tume, Matuzak, and fierce Ted Hendricks, number 83, intimidated, controlled, established superiority. Lawrence, 70, and George Beeler, 64, sprung Mark Van Eager. When the smoke cleared, the Raiders ruled 34 to 13 a tribute to the organization's unwavering commitment and resourcefulness in the face of adversity. In Los Angeles in week 12, photographers and fans alike awaited the Raiders. Coming off a Monday night game challenged Raider mind and muscle, but the response was punishing. The playoff-bound Rams excel on defense, but the Raider offense, number one in the AFC, chipped away. Always productive Pete Banaszak, number 40, scored once. And Mark Van Egan surpassed 1,000 yards for the second straight year. Late in the game, a great effort by the Ghosts. Dave Casper put the Raiders ahead 14-13. But the Rams struck back against an Oakland secondary, thinned earlier by the loss of George Atkinson with a broken leg. Valiantly, the Raiders fought clock and scoreboard, but their heroic efforts came up just short on both. Week 13 brought the Minnesota Vikings in a rematch of Super Bowl XI, the monumental Super Bowl where leadership, talent,
preparation and performance fulfilled the Raiders' destiny of being crowned world champions of professional football. But Oakland needed victory now to gain the playoffs. Superb blocking by Dave Dalby, Gene Upshaw, George Beeler, Art Shell, and Henry Lawrence enabled Stabler to find Cliff Branch. Special teams led by Captain Warren Bankston, Ray Guy, Steve Sylvester, Terry Robiski, and number 56, Jeff Barnes, stunned Minnesota. Linebacker Willie Hall's fumble recovery broke the dam, and a tidal wave of Oakland points poured through. Aggressive defenders were everywhere, and linebacker Floyd Rice pounced on this fumble. Raider fans were ecstatic, but there was still more to come. With big art shell number 78 riding the rush harmlessly away, Ken Stabler hit for three scores in the devastating 35-13 win. Once again, the Oakland Raiders had won a playoff berth. Oakland's total commitment to excellence is unmistakable. 10 playoff appearances in 11 years. An awesome record of achievement. The game would be played before the largest home crowd in Baltimore Colts history. This game itself would soon make history as one of the longest and greatest ever played in the 58 years of professional football. From the outset, Raider execution was impressive as Stabler began a classic shootout that would total 345 yards passing as just one phase of a thundering assault. Now the Raiders are thinking six at this juncture. Hand off to Davis, adjust over left tackle down to the 25, the 20, takes off to the 15, the 10, zip on the man at the five, touchdown Raiders! Clarence Davis with a quick adjustment at the line of scrimmage, powered past the left tackle spot, head ahead of steam, pranced into the secondary, and left a trail of would-be tacklers behind him. While Clarence Davis left tacklers clutching at air, Baltimore quarterback Burt Jones was reluctantly accepting the axiom, when sacked by Matuzak, discretion is the better part of valor. Like a great silver wall, Rice, Matuzak, Hendricks, Johnson, and others rose up. Then the Raiders struck again. Second down, Stabler back to pass, throwing a deep bomb. He's got Branch against Muncie. He makes a leaping, incredible catch. Gets up from the 28 and is run out of bounds on the 20-yard line. Holy Toledo, what a catch by Branch. The ball is on the nine. Stabler back to pass. Vanizak is in the game. Stabler looks, lots one to Casper. Touchdown, Raiders! Every play was big. Ted Hendricks got a hand on this punt, and Jeff Barnes recovered. The Raiders converted the blocked punt into points and led midway through the third quarter, 21-7. But the Colts fought back, finally going ahead 31-28. Time became crucial. The Raiders had to stop the Colts right now. They did exactly that. Gain possession and then calmly sent Ghost to the post. Branch left, Boletnikov to the right. Back again, straight drop back, pumps once. He goes medium deep to Casper. Casper makes it over the shoulder, catch! He's caught from behind at the 15 yard line. A very, very remarkable adjustment as Casper, I think, first turned the wrong way and managed to run under that high lob to the deep part of the defense. Casper's catch was a work of art. And then Coach Madden called on Earl Mann to send the game into overtime. This AFC playoff would go into a fifth period 
a period of magnificent defense. In the final 23 minutes of this incredible game, the towering rate of defense did not allow a single first down. Tension and exhaustion tapped the last resources as the fifth period became the sixth. Desire and determination were stretched to ultimate limits. But these proud Raiders made one more gallant effort, one final drive, one relentless, undeniable push goal. Stabler to Branch for 19. Then, on second and seven, a beautifully conceived play pass triumphantly brought down the curtain. Dave Casper's touchdown met a 37-31 victory after 75 minutes and 43 seconds, the longest game in Raider history. Another glorious gem in the Raider crown. In 15 years since managing general partner Al Davis, first pledged to build the finest organization in sports, the Raiders have totally dominated pro football in terms of consistent victory. In 1977, courageous general partner Ed McGah, coaches, staff, players like Charles Phil Yar, Mickey Marvin, Hubie Ginn, Rick Jennings, Jimmy Warren, Rod Martin, all contributed to continued greatness. But true greatness for the silver and black lies in its future. When seasons like 1977, which was filled with glorious deeds and gallant hours, give birth to new achievements, big games, division titles, playoff heroics, and another world championship for these proud Oakland Raiders.